Hey everybody, welcome back to Sounds Like a Drum, Kane's independent media production. Today, we are going on a little bit of an adventure, trying to figure out why you might attach a towel to the side of your snare drum. You heard us right. Uh, we are talking about the idea of taking a towel and attaching it to the side, to the shell of the outside of your snare drum. There's more talk about this on the internet and comments asking about it than I ever would have guessed. And the reasons for doing it are varied, but generally people are pretty sure that it has to do with some kind of sound effect. So that's what we're here to find out. Now, the primary offender here is a couple of photos of Stuart Copeland back in the day, probably somewhere in Synchronicity era, at his drum set, set up. It's got writing on the heads and all that stuff like he used to do, big kit. And there is a folded, pretty sizable towel, clearly duct taped or gaff taped to the side of his snare drum, kind of where his right leg goes. It's a lot of towel, but the important thing is none of it's on the heads. It's not touching the heads at all. It's explicitly not touching the heads. And then in addition to that, a little square of gaff tape like you might expect to see on a snare drum when someone wants to cut some overtones. Now, given that Stuart Copeland has a really, really signature snare drum sound that evolved over those records, but is something that people seek out, something that people reference, and is somewhat of a benchmark for high-tuned snares, we want to figure out where this is coming from. So we're going to reverse engineer this and just see what's what. So let's dive in. Here's a rundown of the arc of sounds that we went through. Now we don't have a chrome over brass 5x14 here, but a 5x14 Supra is very, very close. It's in the same realm. It gets a really similar sound. We tuned it up to match the sort of range that those records were in back then. And then we went ahead and added a towel folded up and affixed with a drum G to the side of the drum to keep us from getting tape on the side and ugling things up. And then a similarly sized piece of gaff tape on the batter oriented more or less where he would. And for those looking very closely, we also swapped out the batter hoop for a die cast, which is something that you can see on Stuart Copeland's signature drums and is something that he did at times. If you're curious about the possibilities of combining different sorts of hoops and the effects that that'll have, we have a video for that too. Now, as you may have noticed, there was a dramatic difference when we pulled the tape off of the batter head. This is to be expected, gaff tape on a batter head or gels, those kinds of things. We use them because they give us an effect. They do the thing that we need them to do. Now, by comparison, when we pulled the towel off, nothing happened at all. In the close mics, in the room mics, it didn't change it at all. So the proof is right there. This is not a sound thing that can't be. It's not enough pressure given how high this is tuned and everything to actually change the resonance of this drum in a way that would be audible 
in any microphone. Now with a little bit more digging on the internet and just sort of thinking about practicality here and looking at those photos a little closer, it seems quite clear that the mounting of this towel on the side of the drum as opposed to where we put it for visual purposes is to protect his leg from the lugs because his floor tom and his snare are very close together and especially back in the day he was a really energetic player he moved a lot he was hitting very very hard some of that music was really aggressive and there's a possibility of frankly getting hurt on the hard way of your snare drum when you're diving in that hard Now on the flip side, it's actually kind of cool to know that if that's something that you might want to do to literally protect your skin, it's not going to screw up the sound of your snare drum at all. You can put a pretty significant towel on there or whatever piece of cloth you want to use to protect yourself. It's not going to screw up your snare sound at all. And the mounting, the way that we did, it couldn't be easier. One drum G clipped one to the bottom hoop, the other end to the top, put the towel in there, good to go. Now this experiment speaks to the very heart of why we do this here. This is a situation where you look at something and imagine a sound from a photo. And that's not necessarily the best way to then tell a story about how that sound was made. It's much more effective if you see something like this to just try it out on your own and see if it actually does something. The forums online would be half the size if people just checked things like this first. If you have a towel and some gaff tape, you can check and see. And then you know that it's not changing the sound at all. It saves a lot of rumors, saves a lot of crazy ideas, and helps us stay focused on the music and the actual sound that we're hearing. This is a perfect example of an opportunity to utilize the scientific method, if anybody remembers that from science class back in the day. Building a hypothesis based on evidence rather than starting with a conclusion and then looking for things to back it up. Confirmation bias is a problem. It's a big problem in generating sound with instruments. We get ideas and then we attach ourselves to those ideas and then work backward from there. Much more effective to gather evidence, build a hypothesis, get your sound that way. Now, having said all that, if you're digging the sound of this drum today, just to catch up on what is actually going on here, coded G1 batter, pretty run of the mill, 300 snare side, again, very run of the mill, 20 strand snare wires, nothing crazy there, tuned pretty high, but not choked out, and the big kind of extra ingredient question mark is the die cast batter hoop, which to be fair, is not changing the sound a ton, but it is focusing it a little bit, it's quelling some overtones, and it's definitely raising the aggression of the rim shot, which of course is a huge part of Stewart's sound. He was all about that rim shot. Additionally, if you do go with die cast, you're gonna get a really, really pronounced cross stick sound. We didn't do any of that in this video, but also a big part of the Copeland sound. Now, when we talk about very high tuning, especially with regards to a 14 inch drum like this, 10 lugs, pretty standard, we got to make sure again that we're not choking it out and believe it or not a lot of that choking is in this tension of the snare side head so the batter on here is tuned what i would consider to be very high it's well above the point of making a round note in the center however i did not specifically tune the snare side head higher for the sake of this tuning i just put it in the normal spot that I would for a 14 inch drum, but then I went up and up and up and up on the batter side until I was getting the response that I wanted. What this means is that the center of the drum still sounds good. It's not choked out, it does have tone, and when you hit a strong rim shot, you get just a little bit wider of the sound than you would if the bottom was also totally reefed. And also as an aside, even at these tensions, you can choke the drum out if the wires are too tight. So recommending here from both of us that you loosen the wires up, tap the drum gently in the center and tighten the wires until just below where they're starting to choke out that batter. But again, with soft strikes. We don't want to check for choking hitting it as hard as we can. And then once you've got that, as you'll see, when you start to raise the height and raise the volume and raise the overall aggression, you're going to get that broadening of the sound the harder you hit the drum. That about does it. I hope you enjoyed this adventure we went on today. We had a blast with it. We were 
super surprised <laughs> to see what ultimately happened. And uh, we would love it if you would like, comment, subscribe, and stay with us for all of our new videos coming out. Click the notification bell. And please click the link below to check out our Patreon. There's going to be extra footage from today on there and all of our other videos, as well as our ongoing symbol series, a lot of other footage. And it's a great way to get in contact with us if there's something you're curious about, like a towel on the side of a snare drum or anything like that. We get a lot of ideas from the community and we rely on it. Thank you.